All right, this is Jeff, the Big Hairy Dog. We're going to get started now. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, we got uh, eight of our, uh, four of our eight people in attendance, looks like. Well, we got a few more than that now. Ah, wow. Excellent. All right, so. Wow, it's seven of eight. That's like uh, about as good as it gets, I think. All right, so we're doing uh, version eight physical inventory. Um, and this is the basic outline that we're supposed to go over. That's my email in case anybody wants to email me a question afterwards. Um, so, you know, physical inventory, and I got to say that most of physical inventory is prep. Um, so we put prep in, in our outline because if you're not ready for the physical, it's a waste of money and time. Just going to say, um, you know, none of this stuff's required, but I would strongly recommend backing up your database that morning of. Uh, we're not going to go over backup. You should have a backup in place. You should know how to backup. I can help you with that if you don't. It should probably run an on-hand report. Not that you need it, but it's a good idea to be able to look back in time and say what was the on-hand before the physical, right? It's a, it's a, it's a wise choice. Um, test your downloads. If you're doing scanning, you know, you need to test your devices the days preceding the physical inventory. You don't want to wait till the day of and have a emergency tech call. So be prepared is what I'm saying. Um, uh, zones and mapping, um, strongly recommend zones, strongly recommend mapping. Um, if, you, uh, if you've not done this before, I'm, I'm guessing most of you have done it before. Um, I used to be in retail. And so, you know, we would draw a sketch. It doesn't have to be to scale of the store. We would identify fixtures, rounders, HRAC, whatever. We would give them numbers, right? And then we would we would make sure that we've accounted. So then then you have zones that you're going to count. You're going to count this section right here, and you have a list of zones, and you have to make sure that you have accounted for all the zones. It's it's not rocket science. Zones are logical geographic sections that exist on the sales floor that have a logical starting and ending place. Um, there are some weird zones, like if there's a display and it's only got four items in it. Hey, it's only got four items in it. You're not going to tear the thing down and move the stuff into the regular lines. You know what I mean? If you if you have uh, items in the manager's office, make a zone there. So what? You got three items. You got to count them. Right? Zones are a way of managing the count. That's all they are. So strongly recommend you draw a, a sketch out, a map, number the zones, have somebody who did not create the map walk the map, Walk around with it to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Basic stuff. Um, strongly recommend, you know, obviously uh, tagging. That should be going on like a month prior to physical. Weeks at least should be checking tags. You're never going to be 100% tagged, but you know, you gotta you gotta make the effort, right? All right, so. Um, we should probably get into the physical physical part. And I actually have uh, some notes that I usually work from myself. Uh, they're my notes. Now, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't upload the text document, so I took a picture of this and I uploaded it as a handout. If you want to see it, you have it there and you can download the JPEG. I don't know why we couldn't upload a notepad, but all right. Uh, and again, we already talked about prep, so we're not going to go back over the prep part. but. We're going to dive into the actual tool and how to start a physical, right? So to start one, we have to go to Tools, More. It's not in the main Tools menu. And we look for our Pro PI, right? So let's go get Retail Pro going. So if we go to Tools, now my, my menu here is on the left. Some people's menu could be on the right. You can have it align either way, right? You can, you can leave it over here. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of touch screening and you're right-handed, it's good to have on the uh, right. If you're doing a lot of mousing, it's most of us like to read left to right. You know, six of one half dozen, right? But tools more, right? There's your there's your R Pro PI. So that's how you get to the tool, right? You go to tools on the top, more R Pro PI. Okay, I already have it open down here. It should bring you into this here physical. The physical tool. Um, 
and I don't see any chat uh, questions yet. I hope that hopefully everybody can see my screen well enough. I lowered my resolution a bit to make it a little bit bigger for you guys. If it's not big enough, let me know. I can lower it more. Um, so first thing I'm going to do in, in this thing is I'm going to go to options on the top here, and I'm going to check in my system preferences to see if I'm using zones or not. And I, I would I would strongly recommend using zones. A zone is just a, a holding place for a portion of the count. That's all it is, right? That's, so it's whatever you want it to be. I mean, I've seen people do zones as this vendor is a zone, that vendor is a zone. That's dicey, though, because vendors aren't all merchandised together usually. It's better if they're geographic, if they're physical locations. I mean, items could be in the stock room and they could be on the sales floor. They'll be counted in their respective zones. They'll be merged together and you'll have a master count, right? That's that's how it works. Anyway, so this is how you make sure you're using zones. Just go to, to options, system preferences, make sure you're on zones, right? Click OK. And then uh, then we would start the physical, right? So to start a physical, we go to start physical. We go to stores and we click new. And we pick the location we want to be on. And uh, we click OK. That's it. That's how you start a physical. That's all there is to it. Um, you can click inside here and take a look. Um, nice. So um, this is a good example of a clean start right here. So the on-hand quantity gets copied to the start quantity. We have not countered anything because we just started it 10 seconds ago. So we're short everything, right? That's how it works. Wait, that's step one. That's that's the first part of this process, right? Let me see if I can grab that back over here. So uh, tools, more, our pro PI stores, new, Check off the stores, and no, that's incorrect. So this part here, you guys can scratch out. Just uh, check off the stores and select OK. Um, the um, version nine gives you this option to name the physical, and that's that's uh, some notes that I had sort of made go backwards to version eight. You know, copied it anyway. So yes, normally we would just check off the stores and click OK, that's it, right? All right, so now we're talking about the actual count. So the actual count, we would, in the tool here, go to physical zones, right? And then this is where we would click new to make a zone. Now, if we're gonna make a zone, we should probably have something to upload. So let's go get something to upload, and this, we're gonna kind of fake it. There are three ways we can, um, we can um, upload, nice. Um, All right, let's see what we can do here. Um, all right, so um, good thing I didn't grab too much of this, right? Um, I'm just going to create an import file real fast. So we can manually count, we can import, we can um, we can use a scanner, right? Those are our options, really. Um, edit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just put some counts in here. Uh, nice. Oh, we got going here. We got um, all 
having a typing challenge moment here. Nice, huh? All right. Let's see if we can get... What do we got going here now? All right. Apparently there's some extra characters in there, huh? All right. All right, now this one here, I put this in there on purpose to have a, a bad item, right? I want a bad item in there to scan. So I, I want to get an error, basically, is what I'm saying here. So when you're scanning an item, um, you can you can scan the wrong barcode. Retail Pro won't recognize it, and so then you get a scan error. And I want to try and duplicate what that looks like for you guys. So I apologize for this little episode here. So all right, so first two characters here are going to be my um, barcode. Then I'm going to have a dead character that's a comma. Then I'm going to have a count. The count could go more than you know. I could have I could have more than one digit of those, right? I'm going to say file save as. And we'll put this on the desktop as zone uh, dot text save. All right. Now, um, now back here in, in system preferences, I'm going to make a new one of these. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call it zone. I'm going to say it starts on one and ends in two for my lookup skew for a character length of two, right? The count begins, we skip three, begins on four and goes up to, you know, eight for a length of five, right? I don't have zone names, don't have sub locations, don't have serial numbers. Uh, I do have item numbers here, that's what those are. I don't have UPCs or any of this other stuff. So save, okay, and let's swing around now and, and see if we can make a zone. So most of us upload zones. So most of us have a scanner. We've gone out and scanned some product. And so we're gonna talk about scanning right now and see how that, that works. So when you're scanning, you have the map, you are running the physical, you give the, the scanner to your person and say, go scan that zone. They start left to right, top to bottom. They scan the entire zone so that um, we know the order of scanning, shall we say, right? And um, they then come back with this zone, with this scanner that's full of stuff and we upload it, right? So that's where we are right here. So uh, I'm gonna click new. Pick my store, pick my zone. You get five characters to name this. So if you have like a like a men's department and you're doing numbers, you could do like that. Have an intelligent naming system is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? You have five characters. Um, zone one notes who scanned it, you know, what it is, you know, like t-shirt or something simple, right? Give yourself little visual clues. So then when I click OK, it now wants me to upload this. So I got manual entry. I could key these in now. Uh, we're going to import it, or we got portable terminal. And if we click portable terminal, it's going to want me to upload from a device, which we don't have, and we're on a webinar, so that's not going to work. But that would need to be set up in advance. There's different kinds of scanners. We can talk about those if you want to know more about them. So I'm going to pick my map that I just created, and I am going to point that towards the... Um, the desktop, text file, find my little zone.txt, and click import, and close. And so if I go look at scanned, it got a bunch of items. Okay, fair enough. If I go look at errors, I got an error. I mean, I put one in there, right? I mean, I intentionally like laid that one in there so we would have it, right? But that happens. If you're scanning a section and you intend to scan a tag and you miss and you hit a UPC code and you don't even know it, and that UPC code is not a retail pro, you're going to get this exact scenario, right? So if you got errors, 
um, if you've got errors, then you need to locate the error, right, and correct or delete. So I mean, this little thing we got right here, you can right click, um, you could go like this, you could click in here with your, your mouse, hold the shift key, right arrow over, and the right arrow down actually, or you could right click and select, I believe you can, no you can't, huh? I guess you have to like, actually do the, the, the shift select thing, huh? The point being that if you wanted to, you could, uh, th these are never that, well, hopefully they're not that big. I mean, I've seen as many as 40 errors, but usually not that many. Export to Excel. So you could drop this into Excel easy enough, you know. Um, you could also click print and use a BHD zone report if you have that. You should have that. Don't, don't, don't send it to a tag printer. That's really awkward. Um, and so you could print that out. So you need to print that out. So the um, the import ID column is the thing you scanned. Uh, I put it in zero zero because I needed to make it not work. But normally you'd have a real barcode there. The other items that are showing are not bad scans. Those are bracketing items, right? So the item that is in question for a quantity of nine is between these two. Now, that doesn't mean it's right between those two. So if we look at my little example here, we scroll down to the bottom and I'm scanning and I go beep, 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 like my beeps, I get a bad scan, beep, I keep scanning, right? Now the bracketing scans, right? What are the bracketing scans? So I think we're all saying to ourselves, well, it'd be 789 and 123, Jeff, like what, you can't read? Except it wouldn't be those two numbers. It would be 789 and it would be 852. Why would 123 not show up as a bracketing element? Because it has already been scanned. And the purpose of a scanner is to count. So this item here would be incremented to a two, right? And this record would not exist. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you look at that bracketing scan, there could be more than one item between those two. Now, couple that with things like vertical blocking in merchandising standards, you know what I mean? Uh, you could have a, um, you could have an end cap, you know, in the store that has four shelves and you got an error like here, but you've got it vertically blocked. The same product is all the way up and down both sides, right? With similar product in the middle. You just happen to get a one rogue bad scan on the third shelf. You don't know what shelf it's on. So what I'm saying is this is not like uh, a roadmap trail of breadcrumbs right to the item. You got to use your brain a little bit. But that's what this is. It's it's a it's an error report gives you the bracketing items around it and tells you roughly where to go look. You got to go find the barcode though. Now if you find it, one of two things is going to happen. You're going to find it and it's going to have a correcting barcode. You're going to say, oh, I scanned the wrong label. It should be. And in that case, you click at it and you make that barcode be the right number, right? So I'm going to make it be 45. It says, hey, are you sure you want to make that correction, right? Beautiful. Make the correction, right? I'm going to cancel it. Uh, cancel. The other option is I go out there and it has no other barcode. Can't, can't, can't tell what the item should be. So in that case, you pick the item up, you remove it from the section, you take it to the area designated as a trouble area. And you set it down so that the person that's managing the trouble items can start tagging that stuff so the trouble area can be scanned last. So in that scenario, then you delete the bad scan, right? Completely out of the zone. Either way, the zone is going to be ready to move forward. We either remove it or we correct it, right? That's it. Everybody still good out there? Any questions? Anybody got any? Everybody, everybody awake still, hopefully? Excellent. All right, so um, I'm going to say yes and delete the item. We go back to scans. In scans, um, be careful out here. This thing wants to wants to sort by record number. Now, it just so happens because I exported these and imported them, they are in, in the right order. But but 
you want to make sure that you have this column here, this record number column. By default, it won't be there. You might have to go to interface, page manager, and you'll find it's usually, it's usually like literally right there below the line. You just have to double click it and make it go above the line because you want to be sorting by the record number. You want to be sorting in the order they, they uploaded, if that makes sense. Because uh, that's the order they printed typically so anyway if we click print then and we click ok and we get off the zebra and we print that to a real printer we get a physical zone report here that shows the items we scanned the quantities um, this is an excellent tool to go and sample the data to see if in fact we scanned it correctly so the question is not are we making mistakes the question is are we finding the mistakes i guarantee you you're making mistakes i've taken physical in 22,000 square foot stores and i've had excellent ones and i've had very poor ones and it all comes down to prep and it comes down it comes down to double checking your work as you go everybody's making mistakes so sample the data. If somebody scans a section, have somebody else go randomly count five of those items. You know, somebody needs to look at it. You'll catch some of the errors. You won't catch them all, but you'll catch a great many, right? So got a little place up here where I just put it in this place that says verified by, where somebody can just put their initials. There's the note. There's who scanned it and what it was, right, that they were counting, Right, if the zone has a name and then name's intelligent and it says men's 101, and I know where the men's section is. Maybe I don't even have to look at the map, right? All right, so they uh, go out to that uh, zone. They find that this was not supposed to be 61, and we can then click there and say, no, nope, it's supposed to be six, not 61. I can change that, and there was an item number 45 that was not included in here that was meant to be counted as part of that one was actually a 41 they mistyped it anyway so i could now say add counts uh, click into manual entry type in my item press enter click uh, close right so i just added a, a different item right to the to the um to the scan i just went down to add counts here on the sidebar menu so any zone that exists, right? Any zone that's in here, if we go into the scan and click add counts, we can always add counts to it. I could I could import another file. I could I could upload a um, a portable scanner, or I could just key some stuff in, right? And if I'm keying stuff in, I got two modes right here. So this first mode, next item, I'm just going to type another number, 42. When I press enter, it assumes quantity one. Boom. Now, if I type it again, it adds up. See, I got two down here now, right? Now, this mode here, quantity for next item, it's more like a 10 key, right? So I could type 43, enter, 5, enter, 44, enter, 7, enter, right? I could just 10 key those in on the on the 10 in the numeric keypad. All right, close that. All right, so we have this zone. We had it double checked. They came back. We made a few corrections, but they, we feel like it's solid now, right? So at this point, we want to back up so that we're not inside the zone. Highlighting the zone, we want to merge the zone. Okay, so earlier we had an error, and when we had an error, we had a red dot. We had to clear the error to get the red dot to go away. Now we're merging it, and we get the blue dot. Blue dot good, red dot bad. Okay, and we're still doing okay. I don't see anybody with any chat questions or any hands raised, so hopefully you guys are still uh, operating pretty good out there and following along. So this process, which we've gone through, but the point is with zones, you've got a list of these zones. You've made 50 zones on your floor. Zones should be, they should be about 30 minutes, right? You don't want a zone that's four hours. That's not productive. You need to be moving. You need to keep the blood going. You need to be able to count, come back, turn it in, count, come back, turn it in. You know what I mean? You gotta gotta keep the energy up or you'll never get through the thing. Um, they need to be 
big enough to get some work done, but small enough to troubleshoot very quickly. If that makes sense to everyone. So I'm going to run back through it real quick just to, to, to make sure we're all on the same page and we will um, go find our zone. Now the zone gets, gets relabeled here. See, so I'm going to go ahead and change this back to a TXT um, so we can re-upload it. If you want to copy, not that it really matters much, but paste. Um, you could also name it as a DAT, as a data file. It's, it's just a text file, but you can name it any way you want, right? So if you wanted to, you could, let me see if I can put this all together for you. Um, let's say you have three scanners and you have a really expensive section of product. You wanted to merchandise inventory. You did a big, nice filtered view and you filtered for that, whatever that was, right? Then you, um, you highlighted some of these things here and you said, uh, select columns and export out to Excel. You could then have somebody count these in Excel. And then w from Excel, you could do exactly what I did. You could say to save it as a CSV file, right? Or you could have them count it in notepad, but Excel would be better, right? So anyway, you see where I'm going. I probably should not have exported that. It's okay. We can get back to the tool. We can wait for the export or not. So the point is you could drop that data into Excel and have them do a manual count, save it as a CSV, build a map, and import their counts. Not terribly popular, but but doable. If you have a section that needs extra control, like like if you were counting like kayaks and you got you know 45 kayaks in the building, they're large, you know, and you have to walk around while you count them. It might be smarter to do that in a spreadsheet, right? Especially if they're not tagged or the tags are hard to get to. So um, we click new, we give, we pick a store, we give our, our zone a name, uh, zone two. Again, try and be smart about your naming convention. If you have multiple stores, I would strongly recommend that you do like two letters for the store, and then I like, or just do store one and then say men's and then have a section number, you know, like that. Because when you upload multiple stores to the main, all the zones get mixed in the list. So it's nice at the main if you've got a store number in the first position, if you have multiple stores. If you don't, you don't care. Uh, down here we say Jeff, and we say T-shirts or something, right? All right, so then we click OK. It says how are we going to get the data in here. Um, and I'm going to say we're going to import a file. We're going to use this map here. It is that one there. Um, now, just remember when you're here, when you open this up fresh, you see how it's on data file down here? So if you do name them with a DAT, which is your choice, then you won't have to change this to text. That's all it means though. So that's the file, it's on the desktop. I'm gonna click import, I'm gonna click close. And again, red dot, red dot means you got something bad, you got, a, you got an error, you gotta clear the errors. So we go to errors to see what the error is, and we print that out. We hand that back to the person that just scanned it and say, go find that. It's between these somewhere. They go out and they find this barcode. They come back and they say, I got a correction for you. Or they say, I couldn't find a barcode. Here's the item. And they put it in the trouble area, right? So let's say they got a correction this time. Let's say it's it's uh, 41. I click edit. I type 41. I press enter. It says, you sure you want to make that change? And I say, yep, I sure do. And I click save and it should now be good if we go out of there, come back to errors. That's really weird. It's still showing up in the errors, but uh, in scan, yeah, so it's showing up over here now, right? That's been corrected. So, and again, this this item here is, is not in sequence numerically, right? As it shouldn't be because that's the order of scanning. You follow? This was scanned. If, I, if we corrected the scan and we got the right number on it, then it, that's the order of scanning, and it should be scan, sorted by this column over here. Where if you leave it sorted natively, it'll sort by item number, and it'll drop that item to the bottom. See? Anyway, all right. So then we have all of our zone fixed. We click print. We print this out. 
we had this to somebody who did not scan it because you can't correct your own you can't you can't correct your own stuff right you, you'll make the same mistake over and over again you can't proofread your own document you can't you can't correct your own count same thing right somebody else goes out and they they randomly pick some of these items to double check they find it's everything's good we feel like this account was good we back up we click merge zone now i like merging the zone one by one some people like to to mark the the whole store mark store and then merge all marked i i like the check off i like saying look this one's been double checked this one hasn't oh this one's double checked now okay i'm gonna mark that one off that's just me world according to jeff anyway um now uh back here to our little um little note thing all right so we upload the manual count sheet we just kind of talked about. If you export out of inventory, you can make a manual count sheet and import it. If you have errors, you locate them and you correct them and you delete them. If you have a scanner that requires clearing, you clear the scanner, right? So the, the Percon PT requires clearing. The Janum requires, the XP30 requires clearing. Uh, the um, the um, the Foundry Logic products, there's a whole bunch of those, don't require clearing because you you upload different zones with different names and it manages multiple zones. So you're always creating a new zone and you're uploading a new fresh zone with a new fresh name so you don't have to clear it per se. So um, make sure you know, and, and, and if you haven't used it before, get a, just get the service department to set you up with a training you know, an hour on the phone with a tech would be more than enough to make sure you know how to heck half an hour with a scanner if that's all you're going over. Um, right. So clear the scanner and send it back out while somebody else uh, checks out that zone because we, we printed it out and we're going to have somebody double check it, then merge the zone. That's it, right? That's the process. The only thing we didn't do is we didn't clear the scanner because I don't physically have a scanner in front of me and it's very difficult to do because we're on a webinar. All right, so this line, this line that's just sitting here, is not just pure decoration. There's four steps to this physical process. We start it, we count it, we look at our discrepancies, we look at the update. These first two, start and count, they need to be done while the store is closed. It's very important that the, the, the count be done while there, the merchandise is not moving around, if that makes sense to everyone. So um, these second two pieces down here do not need to be done while the store is closed. That's why I put a little line there. Uh, so let's talk about how that works and why that works. So uh, let's say down here we have 10 in, in, we have 10 on hand, we hit start. It's gonna copy that 10 from the on hand column to the start column. Of course, we just hit start, so we're short everything at this moment we go out we count eight that's the scenario that makes a difference of two right all right so the, the the update the process that does the update works like this down here the new quantity that we're going to have is going to equal the current quantity okay the current quantity is 10 plus the difference okay plus negative two hey that equals in my count that equals eight that works that's cool what if you sell five does it still work well, let me see. If you sell five, the on hand changes to five. And if we take five and negative two, we get three. And if we had eight and we sold five, we'd have three, right? So because we're using this number here to update this number here, and we're not using that number at all, we're just using that number to generate this number, um, we can actually open the store at this point right here, right? Once we're done with all the zones and we know the physical count in the store, the discrepancies aren't changing at this point. So you can open the store and start making sales. And you can let this number here go down. If that makes sense to everybody. Okay. Um, if you, in this scenario right here, if you were to sell one of these prior to making the count, you would only be able to count seven, correct? And the on hand would have changed which means you would have a discrepancy of negative three. Negative three and six does not equal seven, unless there's some new math that I'm not aware of. So in that scenario, the receipt took it out and the lack of counting took it out, right? So you're double dipping. 
if it's in the store when you hit the start button. When you hit this start function, if it's in the store, it's got to be counted, period. So having the store open during these two is tricky. Now, I've seen people do it. Like you could scan 80% of the floor. You could be on the back aisle scanning out the last sections and open the store. If somebody buys something that you know you haven't scanned, you scan it in their hand, right? You could manage that. So you, you come in early, you scan down most of the store, gets around 10, 10, 30, whatever you need to open, you open and you manage the last aisle while people shop, right? You could do it. Then you continue on scanning into the stock room, but the stock room's safe, nobody shops the stock room, right? So there's ways to do it, is what I'm saying. You could also, um, if you're gonna close early, you could take the scanners and I like my zones to be fairly small and manageable, but if I'm going to close early and I'm going to close at six o'clock, I'm probably going to scan the stock room at two or three, and I'm probably going to load those those scanners up and roll the dice that I don't have a upload problem, right? It's harder to troubleshoot, but I, you know, if I could get ahead of the game, it's it's probably worth the gamble, right? So there's different strategies on not being closed all day, either either opening later or closing early, right? And there's different ways you can you can get that count going. All right, so once we have scanned all the zones, so we made these zones, we made ourselves a little checklist, we know exactly how many zones we have, we've accounted for all the zones, all the zones have been uploaded, double checked, merged, life is good, we're ready to move to step three, right? So, um, in in uh, regular retail pro, we back up, we go back to stores, and we have a thing called discrepancies. It finds every discrepancy. Of course, in this one here, this this inventory I've got going, everything is going to be a discrepancy. I counted what 12 items. So normally we would print this out. We can do it by department. We can do it by by vendor. We got, I got different design files. If you don't have these design files, reach out to us. We can email these to you or we could have a tech drop them in. Um, so if it's done by by department, it should have little, uh, there we go, it should have little subtotals for each department, see that? So that way you could break this up and say, Johnny, you're gonna do this department, Susie, you're doing that department, right? I mean, it'd be beautiful if you could check every one of these, but you're gonna have to prioritize the discrepancies, right? So in version eight, you can still edit the quantities. So that's what most people do. I'm not sure I, I'm totally behind it, but it, it is the easy way to do it. So what they do is like, if they wanted to correct, like we said, this one here is wrong, uh, but I, you know, let's say I wasn't on this first page. I could click up here, I could type in you know, 85, it would take me to that, to that item. I could click edit and I could put in my count. Save go on to the next item, right? So you send this that paper out, they, people do the research, they find errors, because there's gonna be errors. So, I mean, hypothetically, if every zone was scanned perfectly, there would be zero errors, right? But you'll find errors in the zones and you'll find more errors here in the discrepancies section. That's just the way it is. So that's why we have two points of double check, right? So you make all the corrections you can in this physical inventory process. So you work yourself through that discrepancy report, making as, as many corrections as you can when you feel like you're done, like you've made all the corrections there are to make, then um, you update. Workstation one is locked, yes it is. Okay, you can't update while you're in Retail Pro on, on a given workstation. So if I put myself back to the main menu, and I click back in here to let me update, right? Now there's two kinds of updating. There's, there's main and remote store, right? So if you're a main, which is what we are right now, then it looks like this. We pick our store, we click next. It is very important here to change this to all items. It defaults incorrectly, and I have logged that with the developer, and they said, yes, it does default incorrectly, and we will fix it in version 9, which they did, by the way. So um, they did not go back and fix it in version 8. 
What happens if we leave it here on only items of the physical count? Well, um, let's say that we have a couple of items. So let's say we have, um, let's say we got an item and it has a start uh, and a count, right? So let's say we have an item that has a start of two and we count zero. We have another item that has a start of four and we count three, right? So on and so forth. Maybe we have a negative one here and we count one, right? So this would here would, if we were to go and do this here, the difference, right? That's minus two. That's um, minus one, right? That's two. It's a positive two to get up from negative one to positive one, right? Of course, that's bugging me. But anyway, um, in this scenario, do all three items have a count? No, they don't. This one has no count, right? So if we don't update all items, that one does not get reset to zero, and that shrinkage passes through to next year. Does that make sense to everybody? When you do a physical, if you didn't count it, it's because you don't have it. We update all items. Very important. We click next. We give ourselves a reason. Physical. We click next. We click finish. It shows us the filter. We clear all and we click OK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel this right now. Um, so we can still play around with this. Um, if you were at a remote store, uh, the remote store would say prepare instead of update. And when you click through those screens, uh, this would be checked off already. This would be grayed out. You won't be able to do anything here or here. It'll all be grayed out. And when you click through it and, and, and finish it, it actually um, creates a file that gets pulled back to the main. So then you would want to do a quick pull. Then the main would um, process in and then open the tool. Do not have the physical inventory tool open. You have to exit it after you process in. You have to then enter the tool fresh. That's when it does the import. I've had that tech call. It's easy to get around. Just exit it and come back in. So um, let's discuss a remote real quick. So if you have a main and you have a remote store, the remote store makes sales, makes sales, makes sales. It pulls those sales over to the main, right? Correct? So if we're going to do physical inventory first thing in the morning, hypothetically, um, you know, I would come in and make sure that polling was complete. And I would consider initializing their inventory. Now, I could have initialized their inventory days ahead of time. Does everybody know what initialize is? It's send a fresh copy down to the store, right? That's what initializing is. Um, tools, polling, come on. It's not really a training on polling, but initializing is important. Now, version 8 polling is, is actually quite good, right? So you see here it says initialize, and I can say I'm going to initialize this location here for, I could click off inventory, but it's going to click off everything. I, I'll, all I want is that. That's all I want. I don't need to send the whole thing down. So at the end of the day, the update's being done at the main, right? So if the on hand is not the same at the main and the remote, you could get a wacky number in short. So um, now the odds of there being a mistake in polling over to say the course of a year, fairly good. The odds of there being a mistake in two days, really the odds are in your favor. There's probably not gonna be an error in two days. So I would initialize the inventory say at the beginning of the week or a couple of days ahead of time, let polling catch up, let everything get all hammered out. Or I would initialize that morning but it's a pain in the butt to have somebody at both ends and, you know, do the initialize. So I would just get it out of the way a couple of days ahead of time, and then I would make sure polling's done, right? Make sure polling is totally finished. 
Then at the remote, you start your inventory, you count it, you do all your steps, you then hit update, it takes this count, dumps it into a little mailbag, and then you do a quick poll, it initializes over and sends the count over here. When you process it in, it puts it in the PI tool ready to be imported. You open the tool, it imports, then you actually do the update. That then writes those changes to the inventory file, and then you process out. When you process out, it takes the differences or changes that the inventory made, makes a new mail bag, and we do another quick poll. We say, hey, get that bag, and it brings it over, right? <clears throat> and then we process it in, and we now have our quantities. So if we don't do this manually, we'll have our quantities the next day at the remote. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, if you have a main and remote store, all of what I said here made sense to you. If you don't, you don't care, and I'm not going to explain it further. But um, okay, so now um, let's get back to our um, outline here. So we we did look at the zones. We, we we did look at troubleshooting bad scans. We looked at merging zones. We did review discrepancies, and we did updating. What we really haven't done though. We haven't done, um, we haven't seen what happens. So if I take this uh, physical inventory now and I actually do the update, update, boom, all items, next, physical inventory, next, finish, clear my filter, make sure I'm not filtering it. Now, on the filter point here, real quick, you could, you could do a cycle inventory, like I could do. I could do men's or something, right? I could just do one department, department nine. I could do department nine only and only count department nine and I'll only update department nine. Then next week I could do department 10, right? Clear all, okay. Cycle inventories take a lot of work. They're, they're a notch above a regular inventory. They take great planning and, and great follow through. And let's get out of here. So now the physical is gone. It's not gone. It's in archive. So if we now go to archive and go to stores, we will see that there is a physical in here right there that's dated 1-19-2021, right? And if I wanted to resurrect it, I could click on archive and it would take it back. And I could, in fact, have a do-over. But we're not going to do that. So what did the physical do for us today? The physical uh, made some adjustment memos, right? In fact, it made two adjustment memos. You see that there are two memos here with a reason code physical. Uh, anybody want to guess how many items you can get on a, a adjustment memo? That'd be 900. When it gets to 900, it spills over into the next one, right? So these two documents here, form view, that have a total cost, of course, I'm marking everything out of inventory because I didn't actually count everything, uh, but that would be the cost of your adjustment, up or down, mostly down. Um, the piece that everybody misses out there that I strongly recommend you guys do is a reporting on those results. When I was in retail, we used to have to report on them. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm just going to build one from scratch. I don't see what I'm looking for. I'm just going to click new. I'm going to say quantity adjustments. Really? We're not going to not going to not going to not going to build an adjustment for me, huh? All right. I'm just checking to see if I can figure out what file that is. All right. I'm not sure why my reports is broke here. I haven't been in here in a while. 
I can um, I can get a different version of 8 series probably fired up here. Um, Hmm. Uh, something that's very not right with that version. Um, <laughs> All right, let's try this. Um, Well, let's see if we can get um Yeah, of course, my real V8 machine is giving us problems. It's doing a Windows update, um, and it's and it's done. Well, let's see. All right. Well, let's see if this one works here. I apologize for that. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, all 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I seem to be um, striking out here. Um, usually what I, all I do is I make a ranking department report. Uh, you know, so I like to know what the uh, best and worst departments were. All right, let's just see if, um, yeah, thanks for that. All right, I don't know why it took that long to get to a box that would do it. And of course, I don't have the data here and I can't seem to get the data, but I think um, if you've played with the reports in version eight, you'll get what I'm doing here, right? So normally what I would do, we might have a little data or we could go make some data. Um, but let me just get kind of the gist of what I was talking about here across and then maybe you guys can take that and run with it. Um, so what I normally would do is I'd say like PI, um, DCS, uh ranked by shrink right so then i would i would set the date range typically for me it would be like 31 and 30. um typically you would you would analyze the results of your physical within 30 days of doing the physical right um the sort for me would not be memo or document it would be um dcs So the grouping or sorting, so the level of detail, the, what I'm reporting on is DCS. In the layout then, I need the DCS and I need some results. I need to know like what happened, right? So what I need to do is I need to get um, the quantity difference, the um, Maybe the the retail, but not so much. Nobody really cares about the retail too much. People care about the extended uh, difference in cost, right? So you know, maybe I'll throw this in on the back side, right? Um, so that's my my layout, right? And then uh, in ranking, I would put cost uh, above the line. And I think we want to go up. So we want to start with the, the, the lowest number on top. And we want to, as it goes down the report, we want to go up to the highest number. We want to start with the highest shrinkage and go to the highest overage at the bottom, right? And totals, probably want to, to see the totals of all these numbers. Save. And I probably have no data in here at all, I'm guessing. So I'm going to take this to undefined and see what we have here. I don't think we have any data in here. Because then really what I would do, yeah, all right, so. All right. So I apologize for, for my report engine on that particular copy. Both of those are blowing up. I don't know what's going on. I'll have to investigate that. So, um, you know, back to the topic at hand, physical inventory, right? Um, how do you guys feel about physical? Are there any questions? Is there anything I should answer? Do you understand the four steps? We start it, that creates a a book value that freezes the soft copy, right? We count it, that freezes the physical copy. We compare the two together, make corrections where we can. We accept the numbers, that's it. That's, that's physical inventory. Inside or outside of Retail Pro, in any retail operation, that's exactly the operation that we used to do. I worked for a company in Southern California where we had to go down into the central office and go through mountains of paperwork trying to, to fix those discrepancies. 
at some point, you know, there was a month and a half after physical, um, I had to question whether there wasn't diminishing returns there. Um, but I was old school retail back in the day. Anyway, um, are we all good? Do you have any questions? I haven't seen any questions at all, which I'm surprised at, by the way. So everybody gets the start, everybody gets the zones, and we have a hand. I think we have a hand. We had a hand. Well, all right, so if we don't have any other questions, I'm gonna let you guys out early, I guess. All right, well, um, I thank you very much for attending. Um, you guys have a good day. Stay safe out there. Everybody stay safe with this crazy pandemic. And um, inventory, you know, have fun with inventory. It's actually not painful if you have the right prep. It's actually not painful, contrary to popular belief. So you take care. I will talk to you guys later. All right.